it's finally come to this point. I, I just have to say it. If you're watching these videos, hit like, hit subscribe. And the little bell notification thingy. Yes, so. yes, and the little bell notification. <laughs> notification hit, hit it, bop it, clack it. Just make sure that you're being told about our videos. With the gracious support of our viewers, we bought some construction Cicaflex sealant. But the windows were still freaking leaking. I think we want to replace these windows. There's too many gaskets. There's too many points of leakage. I, I already, of course, replaced the the main attachment of the window to the, the hull. That stopped leaking, but not now the glass attachment to the aluminum. So we attempted to apply some more sealant, this time between the glass part and the aluminum part of the window. This has been working, more or less. The soft sealant does not bond well to the glass, and there is still a bit of a leak. However, what was more encouraging yet again, from the support of our viewers, we fueled up our friend's jeep and headed to Playa del Carmen, the big town, which we had not visited in something like two months. We found a great big piece of plywood, some copper pipe and valves to rerun our propane line to the galley, and quickly hauled our booty back to the boat. Measuring the plywood to start creating the new water tank was awkward in a living space shared by Robbie, Choco, me, and now Robbie's mum, Celine, who has come to stay with us for a while. We can't remove the whole cabin sole, but Robbie planned out the tank while I wrote down the corresponding measurements to the sketched out shape of the tank face. Then he sketched out the whole thing, larger scale, onto the plywood. This is not an exact method, of course, but let's call it artistic. And let's call this cutting method a bit of a balancing act or performance art. It took some shaving and trimming to fit the damn complicated shape into the bilge and fuel tank area. We have to cut a little more off? Yeah. Just a couple of screwed in scrap pieces to prop the first surface up. Committing to the size and shape of the tank meant committing to a lot of prepping by sanding both the bilge and the plywood. Once sanded, the face was ready for that liquid creation potion, epoxy, and a little bit of fiberglass cloth too, just to add some strength and water resistance. <laughs> Now because of this inexact method, I had to take some extra care and time to gather little plywood bits and pieces to stuff the gaps so that we wouldn't be wasting too much thickened epoxy to fill those gaps in. Some strategy and dry fitting with the cloth, and then it's fillet time which forms a nice smooth curve that the cloth will be able to adhere to without air pockets in that angle between the surfaces. With the water tank all epoxied into place, I was getting super stoked about getting that potable water bladder into place. I just want to present to you the small story about the joggle stick. When I bought my first boat way back in Canada for 500 bucks, I had dreams of constructing a whole new vessel. So I learned about this process online on various people's blogs about the joggle stick, or I've seen it also called the tick stick. You can template out curved, complicated areas within your boat, or even outside your boat. It's very useful, and I don't know why we weren't using it before. I knew about it before. We usually use the old 
rotten wood as template or we template out things using pieces of cardboard and drawing them out or just measuring out the final wood pieces with a tape measure. But those are not very definite methods and they require a lot of shaving of the wood pieces. And this joggle stick method worked great. I just place the sticks so that the tip arrives where the edge of my new shape is going to be, draw the ragged irregular end on a smaller board or a piece of cardboard, make as many ticks as needed to be able to connect the dots later with some accuracy, transcribe the dots onto a final plywood piece by lining up the joggle stick with the irregular drawings, and connect the dots, preferably with a flexible material that will allow the curve to be smooth and natural, as the shape is curved in this case. I confronted Robbie about why we haven't worked together using this joggle stick method before. I'm trying to get out of you the story of how somebody like yourself, who has done so many boat projects, could go around using pieces of cardboard or templates or having to pull pieces of wood in and out and in and out mm. and tri trimming pieces of wood. I want to know how you've gone all these years without using the joggle stick. I don't know. I guess we could start using the joggle stick if it makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that it makes me happy or not. It's that I'm trying to understand how you could have been so cruel to yourself over all this time. No, my question is when are they going to make it cheap and available to have a, a laser, <laughs> simple laser guided, you know, you go peep and you go peep and it what draws. They, do? they kind of do it, yeah. No, that's a laser leveler. Yeah, but they don't have something you can, well, that's, you can technically 3D scan an area right now, but it's for smaller objects and it's extremely expensive. Yeah, it's not in our budget to do Yeah, it'd be nice, scanning. you know, you pull out your phone, you go like that, and then you go press the button and it gets 3D printed on your plywood, huh? We're not gonna get a 3D scanner, sorry. Mm, that would be really nice. Nothing has been simple about this project. Not even the process of just moving the wood in and out of the boat. But the lid finally fit in, and the woodwork wasn't all that crooked. In fact, I think it lined up pretty well. We're ready to transport Dracula. Yeah, it looks like a <laughs> vampire coffin. coffin. It's just like dripping. Meanwhile, our cheap $25 Mexican stove was threatening to spew fire everywhere more and more. So from the help of our viewers again, we finally had enough to purchase something a little less sketchy. Just like the new window and water tank and basically every other marine item that you can think of being easy to buy in the United States, we couldn't get the stuff shipped here, so we would have to create our own. We found one decent looking propane cooktop and I began the construction of a gimbaled box for it using leftover plywood. I used the joggle stick again to transcribe the curved shape of the hull onto the first side of the box and then turn that curve into two flat planes for easier construction. I drilled it all together with a couple of screws just to maintain the shape and cut out a slot for the propane hose entry. The box is not an oven, of course, just an object to balance out the weight of the stove and cooking pots at the top. So the area was good for storage. I just had to make the inside accessible. I like the curve of the bowls that her friends have given us so much, I use them again for cutting out the water tank lid as well. When I'm not rebuilding the entire interior of my boat, I'm looking for cocos. Just like fish, they're usually just swimming around, and if you can catch one, you can eat it, as long as it sounds healthy. Sometimes we'll send Choco to go get the cocos. He's also slightly trained to pick up plastic bottles floating by. Not 
Not only that, our doggy helps us husk the cocos. While young, green, or yellow cocos are great for getting juice and jelly, older, wiser cocos offer some interesting surprises. They have the white meat that contains the right stuff to make cocoa cream for piña coladas. So this one has a bit of like this has a little pearl. It's a spongy thing that you can eat. But it make it gives me. What can you do with it? You can eat it. You need a piece here, you know. Easily it comes off. And the other good trick is you just leave the coconut a day or two in the sun. You may have seen us grate this meat before with cheese grater in our earlier videos, but now we're super lazy since we've been gifted this blender and just grind it all up. With the clean cloth, Robbie squeezes out the milk and we can use all that powder later to make bread or to cook in rice. Yeah, that's slop sound, that's exactly what I want here. Do you have a spatula? That's where you'd use a spatula? Yeah, no, the hand <laughs> works better. In this blender, so I should get this stuff out. You can use the milk as is, or leave it in a cool place to separate into rich cream at the top and jelly-like juice at the bottom. Add a little piña, rum, ice, and you're all set to continue on those pouring, sweaty projects. All the components of the water tank are to be fiberglassed and epoxied with several layers inside and out. The recent rainstorms knocked over my tank lid at the end of its drying process, requiring a little extra work to sand the damaged areas and fiberglass them again. I also took the opportunity to glass the stove box and experiment with some epoxy pigment. It's an experiment of waterproofing and painting items that will not live in direct sunlight, because epoxy yellows and breaks down in sunlight, of course. All set to install the freshwater bladder now. We're on the final hole. This is almost it. We almost have water in the boat. Tune in next video to see how this all ends up in a flood and disaster. Oh, there's a lot of wind. Woo.